We're going to play some Mono Red Dragons tonight, everybody. And I have worries about this one. You know, um, but I also, I, there's some things that I, I'm excited about with this deck. Now, we played Mono Red Dragons on stream before, and I've always felt obligated to play like a two of Inferno of Star Mounts. Um, and sometimes I'll play, you know, like an X damage spell. I think we played Crackle with Fire, or P Crackle with Power once. And we played um, Light Up the Night another time. Because I want something to do with big mana. You know, Goldspan Dragon making token treasures every turn or whatever. And we just got a bunch of mana stacked up. Nothing to do with it when we don't have any cards in our hand on turn 7. You know, I want, I want something to do with the uh, manas. Um, so often I'll play these big spells. And then we draw them in our opening hand. Um, or, you know, we mulligan and we draw them again anyway. And, <laughs> you know. So, I've decided. I'm going to strain myself a little bit in deck building this time. Uh, four five drops. It turns out there's a lot of five drops. You play four five drops and you play two six drops. You play the light of the night and you just, you kind of go and you do a lot, um, which is fine I think in a lot of a lot of instances. Um, that kind of mid range deck is more equipped to draw cards off the top of its library in the late game and stuff. You know, so I think that that counts for something. But I also think just streamlining the deck. Five is the top of our curve. We play four five drops, right? Um, six, four drops, and we try to play a lot of two and three drops. Right? So try the Dragon's deck like that and see what happens. But some special concessions uh, for a few cards in this deck, like Maniform Hellkite. Now, you would think, that, you know, I might play Dragonkin Berserker again in this deck or something. Power Dragon, and, and who's here in chat? Hey, what's up, YouTube? Say what's up to Power Dragon. Go watch his stuff. He's a very good content creator. He mentioned Goldhound would be a good call at the one-drop slot in this deck. You know, ramp, uh, it's treasure, so Goldspan Dragon, you know, it sacrifices for double mana when you have a span out. So that's all it's awesome. You know, it's all good stuff. Um, also, it works with Magda, right? Because you can sacrifice five treasures to Magda, Goldhound's a treasure. So, like, all this makes uh, some sense, but I don't want to play too many more creatures than we're already playing in this deck because we have Mana Form Hellkite, which procs. Off of non-creature stuff, not instants and sorceries like I thought when I first started building the deck. It's just non-creature stuff. So, that means we can play, like, Chandra Dress to Kill. We can play Orb of Dragonkind in the deck. And still proc when we play this card a little bit later in the game. Orb is also kind of cool. This is one of our, really, the two cards I've just mentioned, Chandra and Orb, are two of the best ways of this mono red deck getting card advantage. You could play Moonvale Regent. This card was mentioned a minute ago. Um, I think it's probably the best thing that draws cards that you could include in this deck. I wanted to go for mana form, and I wanted to play Leyline yeah, Tyrant for some reasons I'll talk about in just a second. But, you know, we could also play Reckoner Bankbuster. I looked at playing that card. I can't find room for it. You can probably cut a four drop. <laughs> you can probably cut one of these three drops and add room for Reckoner, because Reckoner also procs. Mana form Hellkite. It's pretty cool. Draws cards. It's all good. So, I like Bankbuster in this deck. Again, I couldn't quite find room for it, but Chandra will draw cards on occasion. <laughs> if you find, there's a red card on top, it draws cards. It also ramps. That's important, right? You know, play this turn three, Goldspan turn four. You feel pretty good about that. Or a dragon kind is also a ramp, but it's also card advantage. Late in the game, you'll usually find a dragon on top seven cards of your library. Sometimes you don't, and it sucks, and you hate Magic the Gathering, but a lot of the time you'll find a dragon on top of your library with an orb. So especially if you haven't drawn too many of that game, which is usually why you're popping it in the first place. But we also get to play Fable of the Mirror Breaker in this deck, which also, non-creature, prox Maniform Hellkite. You can copy Maniform Hellkite and then cast a non-creature, get double prox off that, and swing with 4-4 Hellkite with haste, right? So that's a pretty neat trick, but we've also got Leyline Tyrant. The whole reason I'm playing Leyline Tyrant in the Forge Wrap rather than Moonvale Region or something like that is I want to try it with Fable because you effectively get to sacrifice your Leyline Tyrant at the end of every turn, and you only paid one mana for it, right? You copy you copy for one mana. You copy Leyline Tyrant with Fable of the Mirror Breaker. You sack it into turn, and then you just pump all your mana into it, kill your opponent. And if it doesn't kill your opponent that turn, you can just do it again next turn and kill him that way. So, you know, I and you get a free 4-4 four, four haste Leyline Tyrant that flies. You swing with that, too. So, there, there's it's good. It's good stuff, I think, <laughs> that we'll at least try with this deck. I think this um, Dragons has a lot of cool copy targets for Fable. Not the least of which is obviously Goldspan Dragon, <laughs> right? So, a lot of cool stuff for Fable to do in this deck. And it's another way not to not to get card advantage, but to fix draws, fix bad hands and stuff. So, Chapter 2 is at least there. Aside from that, a lot of removal. We've got a fair number of things that deal 4 damage, which I think is important in these decks. Especially with Mono Green experiencing a bit of a resurgence right now. We want to kill those 4 toughness dudes. So we got Demon Bolt in there as a 2 of. Dragon Spire is a 4 of. 
in the deck, but we've also got Strangle in there. It's just a two of. I think this is a fairly flexible slot, but since we're in best of one tonight, I find it a good idea to add, you know, <laughs> cheap removal spells to the low end of our curve. It just seems like the right thing to do. And also Spike Field Hazard, because why would I not play this card? There's also um, Shatter Soul Smashing is just a one of, you know. And at this point, I think the only card in the deck I haven't talked about is Magda Brazen Outlaw. Not a whole lot makes treasure besides Magda and um, Goldspan Dragon. But, you know, once you get to copying Goldspans, <laughs> you, sw you swing with like two Goldspans, you get a couple of treasures. There will come a point where you can sometimes use the ability on this. But mostly we're just using it as early ramp and it's a way to get removal spells out of the opponent's hand to clear the way for stuff like Leyline, Mana Form, Goldspan. It's a good thing about Fable, too, is that your opponent often uses removal on the 2-2 Goblin or the Reflection, and that's removal they don't have for your bigger guys. So... Um, Seismic Wave is also kind of a pseudo-sweeper. This is kind of a compromise. I didn't want to play Burn Down the House in the deck because it kills all of our dragons. So instead of playing Seismic Wave, I want to try this card out. And I think there's going to be lines where we have like a Maniform Hellkite in play, and we bust up, you know, a three a three toughness creature and a bunch of tokens. We get in for flying damage, and we just, we, that feels good probably. So, you know, because we'll also make like a 3-3 a three, three off of this. Uh, you know, maybe. <laughs> we'll try it out, but... I have fears that this deck is a little bit too straightforward for today's magic. It doesn't really play out of the graveyard in any way. There's just no depth. Depth is the word I'm looking for. There's no real depth to this thing. You run your cards out, you hope to, you know, remove your opponent's creatures, and then play a bigger creature than them, fly over for damage, win the game. This is the kind of stuff that worked in 1996, right? You know, <laughs> have to terror that guy, lightning bolt that guy, send your vampire. I'm going to win now. It's That's how we play I'm just not sure that it works in 2022. Again, a little too straightforward. Not a lot of depth, even though there is some synergy. We're just not really playing on a lot of different levels here. We're just like, you know, removal, removal, big guy, a little bit of ramp. Deal with this Planeswalker, I guess. I worry that it's just not enough. I worry that's just not enough. But we do have a lot of flying. I think that's going to matter a good bit. We have a decent amount of removal, and we have some ways to draw cards. So... Fable is awesome. <laughs> Maybe we have just, just enough depth in this thing to win a few games. But I do worry about, you know, decks that play lots of sweepers. It's going to be tough for us to reestablish. Again, we're not drawing cards that much. We're not playing out of our graveyard. So there's just not much resiliency. I worry about, you know, really any kind of sweeper. I worry about control decks. And is it might be some kind of an issue, right? So we'll see. Um, we'll see, <laughs> won't we? But we're going to take it into ramp. Into ramp. We're going to take it into ranked. Let's play some magic. Opponent goes first. That sucks. <laughs> Got our choice of two drops. That sucks. It's not a very developed hand. I don't know. I think I'll keep it. Just for the early game, it seems fine. We'll draw into stuff, right? Put that on my tombstone. Opponent gives us a hello. Hello. Anand logs, 432. They play a ruin crab. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, opponent. Let's see if we can just dragons fire it. We got three of them. I'm kind of worried about Mill, actually. I don't know if we can kill Mill fast enough, especially with this hand. But I am Uma Thurman, and we are going to kill Mill. Oh no, dog. <laughs> Cacophony turn two. Alright. People keep saying that I shouldn't play cards on my turn. They also say I shouldn't play cards first main phase. There are reasons I do that sometimes, too, but... I'm going to kill this Ruin Crab on my turn with an instant speed spell. Yeah, I know. They're tapped out. <laughs> They're tapped out comment section. If I let them untap, maybe they'd counter. I'm just saying. Alright, third land for the opponent. They still don't have another um, blue source. Instead of the bugbear threat, <laughs> let's play Magda. I don't need this orb till a little bit later, I think. It'd be nice to draw a dragon with it. <laughs> I'll say that much. But maybe Den will actually help us out a lot here. Frostbite the Magda. It's whatever. I didn't really care about that Magda the whole time. Oh, wow, they didn't drop a land. Whew, is Maniform safe? Is Maniform safe right now? I'm gonna try it. Why not? This is a big boy. I said we draw into stuff. Here we are. Can you can you deal four damage to a thing, blue-red deck? Especially without a blue source. They'll find it on iteration though, right? You haven't seen one by now, you gotta get it. Yeah, there it is. Maybe they'll just fading hope it with a blue source. Ruin crab now. They, they can't resist. <laughs> they have to crab. Oh man, it's so funny. All right, so we we Chandra here, I think, and then we just um. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter how I do this. Uh, 
Let's do one damage to them with the Chandra and get our red mana. Then let's Dragon's Fire. I'm, again, I'm gonna do it on our turn while they don't have any blue mana untapped, you see. And we can get a dragon out of it. And smack for a, a bunch, yeah. Ten, to be exact. Put them at ten, and like, maybe if they play... Well, even if they don't, we just like Den of the Bugbear next turn, that should work. We go to nine, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, if we do that. They got an answer. Rebuke, you do have a thing that deals four, nice. Well, I think we might be looking to draw a card this turn. It is a stronghold. So now we have a, a thing. We can um, den of the bugbear and get in for damage, or we can orb of dragonkind, try to draw a dragon to play next turn. I don't love that when the opponent has four cards. I think I'll just try. I'm den of the bugbear here. Hopefully it doesn't uh, die. That would kind of suck. We need mana a little bit. Oh, they got nothing. We got a six. We can kill them next turn. We technically have lethal on board. What are you going to do? Are you going to cleansing wildfire? Is that what you're going to do? That'd be fun. Wouldn't really matter, I guess. Yeah, wouldn't really matter. Tasha's. You can't really kill us that way. You got a bunch of four and five drops in the deck. Oh, oh, gold span. Gold span. I don't even really need you. <laughs> but I'm going to do it just in case the opponent has, like, shock. <laughs> One to you. There's five on the board. Let's bring things up to a simmer. We'll bang into him. Alright, we won our first game and it's against blue red. Can I can I can I hit good game? Thank you. Where is it? <laughs> Alright, we go up to silver one on our first game. We beat Mill, that's always satisfying. We go first. This looks fine, right? This is fine. Let's go. <laughs> I hope. <coughs> We're up against Howl. I wonder if it's a werewolves deck. In ranks? Nah. Of course, we're playing mono red dragons in ranks. Who knows? It's a crapshoot. It's a nice uh, fish pet you got over there. I like that. I've always liked the holographic fish. Draw a lamb. We're gonna need those. That's good. That's fine. Put it on black white. Start it on tap shattered sanctum. Let's see if it's Espa. Uh, might just be black white. Well, you're just gonna kill it yet. They, they play a Vanishing Verse on a Magda. It's great. It's actually really cool. Let's play Chandra. I guess slightly less likely to get Vanishing Verse. Oh, I didn't mention this line in the deck tech. There's a line where you can, um, like another reason to play st uh, Strangle in the deck, is there's a line where you can Chandra on turn three and then immediately Strangle or um, Spike Field something. That's a good line. Alright, let's Mountain. Mana form. Let's also just deal the damage to our opponent. Could have left a mana up there. That would at least have been like a bluff. See if they can kill the Hellcat. I bet they can. They wasted that Vanishing Verse. That makes it seem like they have another. They just really didn't want us to ramp. We're gonna get to this gold spin anyway. Tenacious Underdog. Luminarch Aspirin. Black White, or really, S it is Esper Aggro. You see this from time to time. Get another uh, token. Alright, so... Play our land. Do we need six mana this turn? So let's say we play Goldspan. Right? Now, we can't play any of these. Would it be better to go ahead and Dragon's Fire or something? It would be better to actually draw a card with Chandra and see what that action's about. I don't think so. I think we just want a Goldspan. We can Dragon's Fire. But we might want to do that on the opponent's turn so we have a blocker. So... Yeah, let's do that. Let's just poke him with Chandra. She's up to six. That's pretty good. Bang in with both of our dudes. It's kind of a race at this point. And now that we have, um... Yeah, we have Maniform Dragons fire up. We can make a play here. Let's see if they try... to put this counter on an underdog? We can blow it away and get a 2-2. Two -two. But I'd rather them... Yeah, I'd rather them do this and then swing. That'd be way better. They know we have something. They're not coming... Yeah, they're coming in with Lumi. That's what's up. Here come the two tokens at our face. Alright. So, I guess let's choose a dragon we control. Why not? Target the underdog. Well... 
Yeah, yeah. We'll target the underdog with the dragon's fire. Choose a dragon we control. Submit it. Get a 2-2. Block the Luminarch Aspirant if it survives. All right, they've, <laughs> they've had enough of that. They're vanishing versus the uh, Mana Form. Okay. We get our 2-2. Two, two. Let's see if we can block. Yes. Good, good. Good. Hey, yeah, do it. It's <laughs> weird. All right, so pretty good little board position here, I think. I think we want to draw this turn. It was a mountain. It sucks. This is a fun idea. Magda... Swang. And now we'll, we'll sit here and think for just a second to give the impression that we have a play. And we'll end the turn. <laughs> just bluff as much as we can. I don't think it's going to matter, but you might as well. Opponents at five. Um, and they scoop it up! Okay, wow! Wow, they have four cards in their, in their Esper hand. And they can't do anything with that. That's surprising. You have Tenacious Underdog. What are these cards? <laughs> I just want to know, man. Like, should be able to win. I guess maybe they can't kill the Chandra and the Goldspan this turn. Like, maybe they can kill the Magda or something. But, you know, Chandra hits them for one. Goldspan hits them for four. They lose again. <laughs> we won our first two games, too. Like, Arena really gave us the false hope. It really did. Let's go again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> All right. Oh, let's regain our sanity <laughs> against some stoner. One eleven. <laughs> we go first. All right. A little, little ramp. We have to draw at least the third land. We, we absolutely must. Let's see if that's how Arena gets us this time. <laughs> it might be. Oh man, these last couple of streams have been priceless <laughs> in terms of like losing games. Oh, it's been so great. Okay, so I actually kind of want a Magda instead of um, Orb because I want to play Chandra next turn, like guaranteed. And if we get the treasure off Magda but don't draw a land, then we can at least Chandra, right? Since we're not gonna draw the land, are we? We're not gonna do it. <laughs> Oh man, but this Magda's not going to survive either, so it's really a tough choice. Like, Orb, Draw, Land, Mana Form, or Magda, Hope It Survives, definitely play Chandra next turn, right? I mean, Magda. Here's my thought process. If we Magda and the opponent kills it, at least it ties up some of their mana, right? So even if we don't draw the land, that kind of gives us half of a turn. Like, it buys us half a turn, so maybe we can land uh, Orb next turn. And that would not be a good start to the game, <laughs> but we'll, we'll see about it. <laughs> we'll see. Second land for the opponent. Looks like the Mono Red Artifact stack. Kami's Flare. Oh, get in. No land. We didn't draw the land. We didn't draw the land. We didn't draw it. We didn't draw the land. <laughs> Let's foretell the Steven Bolt rather than Orb. I actually think that's better. I really do think that's better because they're going to land Patchwork Automaton. And we're going to have to draw a land to Demon Bolt it, even at one mana, but we have to kill that card if they drop it. Kimana faces Kakazan comes down. Jaxus blitzed! Nice! Very nice. You go to 13. Against Mono Red, there's the land. You're a little late. You are a little bit late. Yeah, it feels weird to use the Demon Bolt there. It really does. I agree with you. <laughs> but I wasn't going to have the mana to use it on their turn. And I don't think I'm going to have the mana to use it next turn. So I think we just mana form or something. Or we can gold spin. That's even better. What happens if I orb? If I orb, then I can still mana form. That's cool. Let's try that. Watch me. Heat up the dance floor. 
now we have to draw a non-creature spell. We just like one non-creature spell would be great. But even if we don't, we have another gold span. It's whatever. It's like hopefully we have enough big dudes in our hand to where we can just go way above whatever the opponent's doing. They just drop two green cards. A Riveter's Decoy and a Senate Packer? What is this? Well. Hmm. Interesting. So Kenzen comes down. So you need that fourth land? Maybe not. I was expecting to see Ray or Raiju here, but it did not come down. Mana f or um, just the 2-2 two -two gets in. Maybe they want the fifth mana. They could probably also kill our mana form if we block, so I don't think we do that. We're really giving them a mana advantage there, but... I mean, they're going to get the mana regardless, but that just means they get to swing again next turn. It's like their Fable's going to go off, and that might help them win the game. And Halana and Alana. Really kind of surprised you didn't play that already, to be honest. Yeah. Let's strangle the Halana and Alana. Make sure they don't get any value off of that. Let's make a mana with Chandra. Poke him. Gold spare. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Swing away. Bang, put him at eight. So they die next turn if they can't remove one of these dudes. They get their reflection. Hmm. For some reason, I get the idea that we it's not going to be as easy to close as I want it to be. But... We'll see. They have to clear out mana form and gold or one or the other this turn. I think they'd probably rather kill the, the uh, mana form just to make extra sure. Alright, so they attack the Chandra with the etching. They come in at us with the Goblin Shaman. They get their mana. That's five. What do you do with it? Playing your old gold spam would be pretty sexy here. Another Halana and Alana. Remember this has reach. Okay, Fable. Fable isn't bad. I say we probably try to draw a removal spell though. Right? Seven mana? Eight with Chandra? Still gotta try to draw. What if sack this orb, right? One, two, three, four, five. I still have five, six mana left, something like that, if I do that. So if I if I sack the orb and get a gold span. That's a good way of securing the win, but we'll see if that happens. I want to try it. I want to try this line. Goldspan Dragon. Goldspan Dragon. Let's get our... We don't even have to get a mana, actually. We can just play it. They give us a nice. And uh, let's get in. Yeah, good game. Good game, opponent. Sweet. That line actually worked. I did not think that line would work, but I just wanted to try it, you know. Whew. Ooh, baby. All right. We got another one. Another one. We're back up to silver tier one. It's a good place to be. Alright, we go first. Din orb turn two. Fable turn two. Okay, fine. It's looking okay. Jeez, dude. <laughs> That's, uh, really hurts. They give us a hello. We'll give them one back. Another Din. Nice. Alright, it's orb. Opponent on hinge gate pathway turn one. This is the deck I was actually most worried about. It was like some sort of control pile. Yep, Miss Gate turn two. Uh oh. <laughs> Whoa. -oh. Let's see if they have a Jewelry Disruption. They don't. Fable comes straight down. Oh man. <laughs> oh, another another pretty fun night. Oh, it's this deck. Okay, Illuminator Virtuoso comes down. Got a CGB watching gamer here. I'll drop this other orb. And I guess Magda. See what we can see. I really wanted another instant speed removal spell there, but I think we may have to go over the top. Yep. Let's try this line. Because they 100% have slip out the back for this Illuminator, but I can always try to remove it after the Goldspan attacks. If it attacks, it does. <coughs> it means they might not have a Fading Hope in their hand. Dose treasures. Let's see if they block. They do. Interesting. Interesting. 
So we're gonna get to kill this thing. Yep, slip out the back, goes on the stack, and we dragons fire that freaking hack. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go, let's go, let's go. Blow you out. I don't see how you can win from that position, but you probably will because I'm talking crap. Alright. <laughs> Killing their illuminator, like getting the chance to kill this thing this early? Yeah, scoop. You gotta you gotta scoop. You can't do anything about that. You can do the scoop it up, scoop the game. Alright, so let's so I guess get one more. People say that um, slip out the back is just like strictly better than a snakeskin veil. It's not true. If you have to slip out the back during your combat step, it's not dealing damage that turn, and that actually sucks like a lot. So I think slip out the back is great. It's really good against sweepers and stuff. But ultimately, I think the green light deck is just b not necessarily better. Just I like it more. All right, opponent goes first. I guess this hand is okay. Tentative, he said. Oh God. Hive of the Eye Tyrant. Remember, guys, they play a wedding announcement. It's a 4 4. Remember. Remember. Oh, no, it's. Ooh, Angels, Dragons. Time honored matchup here. Yeah, I think I want to save this Dragon's Fire. Very likely. Very likely. Like, what do you play next turn, you know? It's like, do I really want to waste the Dragon's Fire on a youthful Valkyrie, you know? Oh, dude, you're not gonna do anything this turn? Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, let's dragon's fire. Let's dragon's fire. Reveal a dragon card, because I don't care. I wanna make sure we kill this thing. <laughs> let's reveal the ley line. And they don't have a turn three play, but they will play like Legion Angel next turn, so. Uh, Chandra. To make sure we get to the tyrant next turn, if nothing else. Unless they vanishing verse, but if they do that, well, they don't have to tie up mana right now to do it. Let's bring things up to a simmer. Yeah, they're gonna kill it. Vanishing ver how many vanishing verses have we seen played tonight? Also, how many vanishing verses have we seen played in the last like three weeks of streaming? Almost zero. <laughs> we play monocolored big guy deck, and it's nothing but vanishing verses. It's really silly. They didn't do anything on their turn because their Haggard Brew Pits tapped. They're going to start doing disgusting stuff soon, though. And we still haven't drawn lands. That's really hurtful. That's orb. Really don't want to do that. Let's try it. Valkyrie. Cool. That's on the table, isn't it? <laughs> Our turn. Draw the land. We did. That's great. It's Tyrant first. Hmm, no. Let's gold spam. Yeah, we gold spam, we swing. If they don't block, then we can just kill it with a dragon's fire. Really worry about a card like Legion Angel in this matchup. There are multiple cards I'm worried about, but... Legion Angel and Lisa, I, I worry about the most. I'm wondering if they want to block or not. They do not. Okay. It's in the turn. They foretell a Starnheim unleashed. Very likely. They swing with the Valkyrie. I'll take that damage. Our turn, huh? Sure. Mana form Hellkite. Neat. Very neat. Let's just try to go above everything right now. Let's Dragon's Fire. Sure. Well, I don't want to reveal. Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because they already know I have the Tyrant. So let's kill the Righteous Valkyrie. Let's reveal the Tyrant they know we have. Get a 2-2. Two -two. And then swing away. And I'm hoping to put them at like way too low of a life total for them to be able to do much about what we're doing here. Do I want to do that? Six, seven, seven. Next turn, I could Leyline Tyrant and Fable of the Mirror Breaker with the mana we have right here. So, do I want to cast this Magda now? Do I want to do that? And this could still feasibly do it with the mana. Just yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get another body on the table. <coughs> 
I may regret this, but you know, even if they meat hook like this turn, they, they still can't kill our four fours. But okay, cool. We beat Black White Angels. Uh, maybe they didn't have another land drop or something. But all right, guys, we get to play one more and try to get to gold. We get to do it. Let's go. You know, I think that the cards I would cut from this deck, given the chance, are Magda. I think Magda could be a more powerful card. Um, and we already got four Dragonfire, four uh, Orb of Dragonkind, two Strangle, so that should be enough early game. I think that Magda could be another three or four drop, and that'd be fine. Like, maybe Magda could be um, Moonvale Regent and another removal spell, like a third Demon Bolt or something. I'd be okay with that. I've seen people ask for Burn Down the House. Yeah, maybe two Burn Down the House in the deck is a consideration. Seismic Wave didn't do much work for us tonight. It helped a couple of times, a little bit, right? So there's there's that. I don't hate this card, but I could see changing this into a burn down the house, changing Magda into burn down the house, and then you got all the sweepers. And I will say this, if you take out Magda, you've taken out one of the only creatures that dies to you know, like a Crush the Weak effect or a Cinderclasm. Luckily, Seismic Wave doesn't hit our own guys. This is mostly in there for tokens, decks, and stuff, but we never got to use it before like wedding announcement. Just flipped over and gave everything plus one plus one, right? So I don't hate this card, but I don't think it's an include you need. The reason I included cards like this mostly was to proc off of Maniform Hellkite. But I think the fact that like, you know, Maniform procs off of Fable, it procs off of Orb, it procs off our removal. If we remove uh, Magda from the deck, there's a line, right, where like if we let's say we put in two burn down the house instead of Magda and like maybe another removal spell, a Reckoner Bankbuster, which also triggers the Maniform Hellkite. I mentioned that earlier. I think that'd be a good include. And dude, taking out Magda and put it in Reckoner, you'd still have like enough two drops, right? So maybe that's what we'll do, right? You take out Magda, you put in Reckoner Bankbuster and two burn down the house. And that way you have this line where you can like Maniform Hellcut on four. And then you can burn down the house on five, get three one one haste guys and a five five flying haste dude. So that's what, twelve damage that turn if you swing with the Hellkite too? Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, it's twelve damage <laughs> on the next turn if you do it that way. So there's some cool stuff. I, I do I do really think this deck has some interesting lines and even some interesting late game stuff. But again, we need to improve the late game. I think taking out Magda, giving it two sweepers and burn down the house and at least one card draw thing in Reckoner, you know, maybe take out one seismic wave. Still have one, but just take out one seismic wave and put in a second Reckoner. I think those are all good includes. So I think that there's something to it, but not enough to it to where it's going to like rule standard. It's just a fun deck to play some games with. Oh, here's another quick fix. Here's another extremely quick fix I think you can make. Minus one mountain, plus one den of the bugbear. <laughs> I think that's another that's another quick one that you can do that probably makes uh, a lot of sense. So, <laughs> you know. Crush the Week might be good against stuff that we have to exile, like Shamlin Gast, Eye Twitch and stuff, but I don't know how much I'm worried about it. Um, but Crush the Week could kill our own Fable creatures, you know, and I don't, I don't think that we want that. So I think I'd stick with something like Wave. I think Wave is actually a cool card. In a deck like this, then of the bugbear's card advantage. Yeah, I mean, we saw it happen tonight. Where we're out of cards in our hand, opponents out of stuff on the, their side of the table, we're out of creatures on our side. And Dun of the Bugbear does technically create card advantage. It gives you a free creature every time it swings. So, you know, it's it's, uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. I think that three is probably where I'd stop. I don't know if I want four. There's this problem with Dun of the Bugbear where, you know, you either have Goldspan Dragon in your hand on turn five and you want to draw that land. You do draw land and it's dent. That actually happened to us tonight, at least once. Remember I said it wasn't specific enough when I said draw land when you were a dent of the bugbear. So. I'm trying to mitigate that happening. I think like pure mono red aggro decks will play three or four copies of Den, but there's a reason that I started on two. But that said, we face enough like sweepers and um, virtual, just, just, you know, a lot of opponents can deal with our one big guy. And then we play another big guy, they deal with that one big guy. So we spend a lot of time with no creatures on the table in this deck, and Den of the Bugbear is really good in that situation. So, you know, good against the control decks that we're bad against. It's probably worth a three of. Very likely. What about fa uh, Face Breaker is a one or two of? Eh, I might like it more than Seismic Wave. I might. Because we have enough treasure. But, you know, if we're taking out Magda, then we're getting fewer treasures. So, you know, maybe Facebreaker's not as good as I want it to be. I will say that Facebreaker would give us something to do with these treasures. You know, we had a couple of games. We just had, like, four treasures laying around, six treasures laying around. And Facebreaker would be really good for, you know, converting those to card advantage. So, you know, I'd give it a try. She's She seems pretty good. 
she might be better than Seismic Wave, especially if you're in best of three. I think if you're in best of three, you can cut the strangles, you can cut the Seismic Waves, you can throw in whatever you want, you know, professional face breaker or something like that, and just move like Strangle, Seismic Wave, or like a Crush the Weak effect or something, just sideboard. So this might be one of those things where, because it's a mid-range deck, it's more of a best of three deck. So, you know, there's always that too. But we've talked a lot about this deck since we stopped playing games, because like it's kind of an interesting deck to look at right now.